Hi, everyone. I am Angelique Jackson, a senior entertainment writer at Variety. And thank you so much for joining us in this winter wonderland. I mean, we have transported you. We apologize to those of you, of course, who are uh, coming to us virtually. You can't really like feel the snow that's happening in here. We've really gone all out. OK, it's not quite that chilly. But uh, we are embracing all things Candy Cane Lane. And thank you for joining us for this global press conference. I am going to kind of quickly done a jump into this here. So without really further ado, joining us first is the director of Candy Cane Lane, Reginald Hudlin. And next we have the producer and star, Eddie Murphy. Joining us now, we have the great Tracy Ellis Ross. V very graceful. It was beautiful. Um, balletic, if you will. We have coming up next, we have Madison Thomas. Followed by the lovely Jenea Walton. And last but not least, rounding out this wonderful Carver family, we have Thaddeus J. Mixon. Thank you for joining us for this uh, lovely, I don't know, we're, we're, in, we're in Kringles, we're, we're all wearing our holiday attire. It, it feel, does it feel like you're back on set? I mean, you truly created a winter wonderland um, while making this film. So Reginald, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch that idea to you first. This was a massive undertaking and you all really created this world that we got a chance to witness on screen. It was delight. Well, first of all, <clears throat> we shot a big chunk of the movie on the Universal lot. And even though I've been making movies a long time, when you drive on to the Universal lot and then, you know, you turn on to Steven Spielberg Drive, and then you pass the site. What's happening? Nothing. We are listening to you, Reggie. But the main thing is I miss them. I'm very happy to see them again, even though they're clowning me right now. No one's clowning you. No one's clowning you. I imagine this was the exact <laughs> dynamic that went on during filming as well. Yeah. 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 yeah and, uh, look, look you, I was fortunate enough to work with some of the funniest people in entertainment. And, you know, I was the butt of jokes in Boomerang, and here I am again. <laughs> I was wondering, and a lot of our journalists here were wondering, how the dynamic changed since making Boomerang, but it sounds like it was pretty much the same. Same dynamic, just a little slower. <laughs> slower, a little stiffer. Same dynamic. Well, Eddie, what was it like? I should be talking. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, is, you okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. What was it like reuniting after th these years together, and specifically for a movie like this? Because it's my understanding you were interested in and kind of looking for a Christmas movie to make, and then it, it comes together and is also this wonderful reunion, too. Yeah, that, that kind of sums it up. That's what happened. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. We yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we had been talking, you know, we would connect and we would throw ideas back and forth. And then this, I was meeting with Amazon, and I was like, I really want to do a Christmas movie. We have a Christmas movie, and Eddie, Eddie Murphy wants to do it. I'm like, let's, let's start Monday. Let's, <laughs> let's, it's not complicated. Um, and well, actually, he put together like this great presentation, like the best I'd ever seen anybody put together, and yeah. how he would do the movie and stuff. It was like, hey, this is no brainer. He just saw the whole thing from the beginning. What was it about Christmas movies that you love so much? You know, what was it about Chris Carver that made you say, yeah, this is the type of character I want to play in and jump into this world? Well, I thought the script was unique, and I thought that it had all the elements that you're supposed to have in a Christmas movie where, you know, you could watch it over and over again. Like, I know the movies that I watch, the Christmas movies, we watch them every year, you know, all the time. And I, I thought this could, you know, be one of those kind of movies that families could revisit. And, and th for this to be your first one, too, because there is a debate as to whether or not 
uh, Trading Places as a Christmas movie. And Coming to America. Is and Coming to America. Christmas, Christmas time. season movies Christmas are season. different than a Christmas movie. And in Delirious, I have on a red suit. That's, that's very exactly. So there's, there's suggestions yeah, of I'm holiday. I'm suggesting holiday yes, yes, in Delirious. Yes, 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 yes. Tracy, can you define that for me? What does the suggestion make- of holiday? <laughs> <laughs> this is the suggestion of holiday and hijinks. Hijinks always says holiday. That's what I saw in the script. Hijinks, Eddie Murphy. I'm in. <laughs> what does make a Christmas movie iconic, though? Because that is that is what you all are making oh. here. You're making something that you know, like you said, Eddie. Families will watch over and over again and find new things to laugh at, new hijinks <laughs> that are fun. So, Tracy, yes, what 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 defines an iconic Christmas film for you? Well, I think love, family, um, and a message that's at the center of it, which we have in this movie, that the family comes together to conquer a bad elf, um, a rogue elf, so to speak. Um, I think the thing that's special about this movie is it's an adventure comedy Christmas movie. So it's funny, there's adventure, as I said, there's hijinks, action, action, children, (laughs) lots of uh, lights and decoration, Um, special effects, Eddie Murphy. you know, the, these are a lot of the elements, but there's, it's a special, it's a good story that has all these elements on it, um, and we hope that it becomes a, a holiday classic. There's also, there's also just a little dollop of fear. Like when, <laughs> oh, <laughs> when I was a kid and I saw Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Abominable Snowman came, I was like, I was terrified. Yeah, Jillian Bell is, is Yes, that, that seriously, that that moment when she appears in this, you're just like, what is happening? And why does that twinkle in her eye actually looks like look like evil in her eye? Right, yeah. it is in fact evil. Yes, it is. And and, and 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 like, there was a movie. I remember. I never saw the movie, but I remember the ad when I was a kid. Eddie, I don't know if you ever saw this. Remember Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I think vaguely. This is this was like set every day where I would reference it was a, something. It wasn't a cartoon. And Tracy though. would go, "What are you talking about?" No, it was live action. And uh, what's the woman? Is the singer was Pia Zadora? Pia Zadora. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe okay. she was. Yeah. Anyway, Santa Claus conquers the Martians scared me. I was like, I don't know what this is, but I don't know why Santa's on Mars. I, I I don't know why he's the last line of defense for. And with Pia Zadora too. I mean, this is a strange film. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's fear. Were there any other? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I was looking down at y'all. I was like, was any? In, she was in uh, that movie, and then she became a singer, and she was married to a guy that owned a casino in and Vegas. Her name was Pia Zadora. Pia Zadora. Zadora. She did a, she did her first name was Pia. The and last name a, was Zadora. She did a duet with, with Jermaine Jackson. I was about to say. That's a reference, you know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys don't know that I learned doing this film is that Eddie is an extraordinary film and music buff beyond belief. And the references, the film references, yeah, the music, <laughs> they, are, references. they are pretty obscure. <laughs> I watched one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to watch yeah. all, all of his movies. You just watched the I one. watched the one and I thought, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know how you could just watch that one movie and not. I've never been about. more disturbed in my life. <laughs> I told her to watch oh, uh, uh, Santa Sangre by uh, Alejandro Hodorowsky. Mm. Wow. It was a Hodorowsky nice. movie. And what a reference. You did not expect him to reference that film. This is what I'm saying. Conversations with Eddie, they're very deep. Very uh, deep, but you know. They're very deep. <laughs> <laughs> he has very eclectic, deep takes. Yes. And that is what informed our Christmas film. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Good night. I mean, Tracy, I'm so glad you asked that question because that was my next question. The yeah. idea of, okay, well then how did that build into Chris? No, what, what that built references? into was a relationship and a connection and chemistry for a husband and wife for the Kavas on TV. On TV. Well, you'll watch it on your small screen or your big screen um, on, in a movie. So yeah, it built to uh, rapport. It did not inform our film. I'm joshing. <laughs> <laughs> the holiday season is also for just joshing with the family. That's so right. Mm. that's right. We, we all feel like family in this room here today. And I, I want to head down to y'all, to the younger members of the Carver family. You know, what was it like jumping in here with, you know, 
icons like Eddie and Tracy and Reginald here and building that family bond between the five of y'all. Why are you looking at us like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I was horrified, but like for the best reasons possible. And I was like, girl, you better have your stuff together. Um, um, I think my first day was on the track scene. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I look up to you guys so much and I'm inspired by all of your work. Um, so getting to work with you guys was wonderful. And I learned so much truly just from watching you guys do what you do. So I was freaking sick. <laughs> I tell you right now, boy, I was nervous. I was, I was nervous. I ain't know what. I was just like, man. I was just watching y'all on TV. Now I'm about to actually share the screen with y'all. Like it's, it's truly an honor for real. Like I'm blessed to even have the opportunity to even work with y'all. So for real, and also work with Reggie as well. I worked with him on my first ever movie, so it's always fun when I work with him. So it's a blessing. Yeah. Um. I was very nervous. Because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know anything. She had no idea who like, we were. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I didn't know anybody, you know? But then, but then, you know, we started working more on set, and then I kind of felt comfortable. And then that's how we started building a relationship. We had fun. The, the big head crew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so true. <laughs> oh, no. I have those pictures, and they will be, and they will be going on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, yep, I have them all. Yeah, I have them too. <laughs> yes, we decided that we were a family of all large, four-headed people. Yes. Pictures with where we're picture the camera, camera was above, and we just yeah. kept just creating six, five, and six, and seven heads instead of just four. Heads. <laughs> it was very soon. It was very good. <laughs> I'm not going to say there was a specific reason I felt seen watching this movie, but that may have been. <laughs> But, but truly, you know, what also did you learn from getting a chance to work with these two? Because, uh, uh, Janae, you mentioned the track scene is a big scene. There's a lot of action involved in that scene. Yeah. There's a lot of this magic, this movie magic that goes on, mm -hmm. um, which Regi Reginald, I, I prefer to call you Reginald. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, which I, I want to get into as well, the, the actual, uh, this animation, if you will, this CGI, this you know, really incredible work that happens in this movie too. But uh, Janae, I'll, I'll, I'll continue that question to you first um, about you know, what do you learn when you walk on set for that first day and you see Eddie and Tracy there? What did you pick up from being on this film with them? I, I think the main thing was probably just uh, getting out of my own head because, um, you know, there's there's a lot going on on set, but I think, I mean, they're absolute pros at just, you know, improving and just being on top of it. So I was having to be on my toes and be like, oh, what, what's going to happen next? I don't know. And uh, I'm so grateful to have been granted that opportunity to, you know, have that creative freedom. And uh, I was, it was a great learning experience. And, um, yeah. What about you, Thaddeus? What did you learn? Man, seeing them snap into character so fast, yeah. I was like, man, that's crazy. I just like, I was just, man, let me figure out how I can do this every single time on any other future projects that I do. Because if I can learn that trait and perfect it the way that they do, I could definitely become, you know, very successful in this industry. So I really picked up on that. And you, Madison? Um, when I first walked into set, um, it was my first movie. I was like, this is my first movie. It's really big. And I didn't know anything, but once I saw them two, I felt very comfortable around them, and I felt like I could do this. Like, I learned a lot from you guys. I mean, that comfort level is what comes through on the screen and also what allows you all to have such great chemistry and improvise. Tell me a little bit about um, that process, because I know that the, the writer of this film, Kelly Younger, who we'll be speaking to later, um, was on set with you all, too, and, and we got to see that great uh, gag reel at the end. That's also a, a Christmas, or just like a classic movie yeah, staple. Yeah, funny outtakes. <laughs> funny stuff. I'll push it! <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of funny outtakes. There's a lot of fun. No, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, the, these young people down here were extraordinary. You know, because I said, look, I'm working with two of the best, with Eddie and Tracy, so these kids have to play at that level. And it's not just knowing your lines, it's also being able to freestyle. That, you know, this, this com comedy at this level is also a level of improvisation. So this is, this is Miles Davis doing kind of blue, but it's, but it's jokes. Right? So, so um, 
And I mean, TJ, I worked with before on a movie I, I did called Safety, and I knew, and that was his first movie, first acting, first anything, and he was extraordinary. Thanks. So I, I, as Kelly and I were shaping the script, I kept, well, you know, we're going to have a musical number because he can dance. And I kept going. And he can dance. <laughs> right. Okay. So I was like, well, we better cast him because I'm really presuming that he's this part, right? Uh, so he came on board, and that was great. Um, and with Jenea, she just had an explosive energy uh, in her reads, and I was like, wow, this is exactly right. This is an athlete. This is a bright young young lady uh, who's getting ready to, for the next change in her life. She epitomizes this role. And Madison came in, and she was just so doggone funny, right? Because it's yeah. just like, look, <laughs> you're going to be doing tons of scenes with Eddie Murphy. Like, you have to carry your weight. And she did. And it was just like, okay, well, we got the dream team here. Uh, we're good. And we work really fast. There's a tremendous amount of improvisation. Um, and, you know, I like to surround Eddie with the best, and we got the best. The thing about Eddie Murphy is, I'm going to call Sorry. you Eddie Murphy every time, the whole time, <laughs> just the whole name. If I had a middle name, I'd do it too. That's what they, that's <laughs> what they call me since the 10th since the grade. The uh, thing fifth about grade, Eddie my whole name. Um, is he's hilarious, but what makes everyone hilarious around him is he's a really generous actor. Mm. So he's not just ah, a stand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely generous. He is actor. so generous as an actor. Um, but he is, because it's not um, all about Eddie being the funny person in the scene. It's about Eddie. See, well, okay, obviously I learned well. Like, <laughs> what was that? Well, I was agreeing with you. Okay. <laughs> that compliment of me is correct. Uh, <laughs> For Eddie, it's about um, the groundedness, which is I, you know, the reason that I've loved his comedy for so long. It's not based in being funny, it's based in being real. Mm. And so there's a mm. connection that is, has to be there for it to come across in the right way, and that's what he does. He's not sitting there trying to get you to set up his funny and his jokes. He's actually in a scene playing with you. Um, that's what makes it fun, and that's what makes it work. And I think, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's what I experienced. And what a, a treat and an honor at this point in my career to be able to work with somebody that you've, you know, admired, whose work you've known and, and grown up with to a certain extent, even though we're basically the same age. No, I'm a little Just a little bit. You can say you grew up. Okay, I, is that okay? It's not offensive? I've, no, I've been in this business for 47 years. And I am 47. So, so you no, I'm, And I'm... <laughs> So I'm 51. No, he was 10 when he started. But anyway, to grow up on somebody. I was 15 and, and, when I <laughs> 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 Jesus and then have, you know, get to a point in your career where you get to work with that person and it's better than you expected. Is and, and also something that you wouldn't have dreamt up. I would I didn't think, oh, one day I'm gonna work with Eddie Murphy, but <laughs> what? Well, that's that's what happened to me. Yeah. I mean, I did this uh, my first movie, a little movie called House Party, right? Mm -hmm. And we get a call from Eddie Murphy. You put the little before it just for effect. <laughs> Is that, was that like on purpose? Yeah, I did a little classic call. <laughs> <laughs> this this show, you might have heard of it. Anyway, go ahead. I did a small who's, who's seminal to... film. <laughs> that people teach about in classes. <laughs> and then the Did National Film Registry. Film. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so we get a call like, Eddie Murphy wants to have a meeting. You're like, what? What did I do wrong? <laughs> what, 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 what the what? And then, there, and then he got on the phone, he goes, you get the joke. And mm -hmm. that's the And he had did a, a college film called uh, Cold Waves. That I right, he was tracking me before yeah. even. Yeah. So. so yeah, so he's like, you get, you get the joke, which is the highest level of compliment because, you know, I, I'm gonna speak for you and correct me if I'm wrong. Like, you know, he's like, are you funny? Are you funny? Yes or no? It's a uh, good bar with Eddie, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that was the well, thing. And not just are you funny, do, do you know when it's not funny? Ooh. That's even more important than are you funny. Right. Because I remember, you know, after the first day or so, and you left, and Eddie was like, I left? Yes. And we were talking about you and how great you were, and Eddie was like, She's funny. Don't say it. My head will swell. <laughs> and it was Did it get bigger? Did it get bigger? Is, it, is my head bigger? <laughs> is it bigger? No. Oh. 
Still, still lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm off. No, I didn't answer your question. No, you were answering my question beautifully. <laughs> y'all, y'all take it from here, please. <laughs> Well, I, 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 fine, I will continue to ask a, a further question. Eddie, I would, I would love to hear the rest of that story from your perspective of what made working with Tracy work oh, so well. Not, oh, mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so awkward. I'm sorry, what'd you, what'd you say there? What you like work, did you like working with her? Yeah, she's game, and she's a good actress, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and she likes to improvise, and she's always trying to make the scene better as well, so. God, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm okay. She's, yeah. she's also yeah. She's she, always trying to make the scene real. Uh-huh. Right, and she, her com. First she's of all, she's game. I mean, she's game. She'll go. F- she'll go for it. You know, and you see her jump around, digging around the box for right chicken. <laughs> Fearless. <laughs> she's a game. My <laughs> favorite take. You could see that I didn't have my shoes on. I didn't it's, notice that. When I'm digging in the styrofoam, my favorite take, because I was so far in the box, <laughs> you could tell I didn't have my shoes on. And then you leave a little bit right after that yeah. last night. So I think that was my last scene. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know. No, you had lots of scenes after. No, the, 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 in the styrofoam in the box was, was my the, last scene of the movie. The last time. Last I, night at the screening, yes. that, that's when you left. Yes, and Eddie. I thought that it was the music; that it was too loud, so it was bothering me that it was too loud. Then when you left, I was like, oh, "She, she walked out." <laughs> she was like, <laughs> no, I was trying to preserve my energy. You know, I am fifty-one now. I have to get my beauty rest in order to look pretty for the morning. Really? Yes, I had to go to bed because I'd been up since five, and I was tired. So you, you don't just wake up like this and they put a little. No, little you know the Beyonce on. song. I woke up like this. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I stick my whole body in a vat of ice. <laughs> Upon waking or before oh, you go to sleep? Before I go to sleep, when I wake up. No, at night it's heat, and then in the morning. No, I'm just w- the sorry. <laughs> Please. I mean, it, it kind of did go with the theme. It, it is, it is a, a snowy. I, I already That's made exactly it. Exactly right. Ones. Snowy. Sorry, everybody. Well, um, as we wrap this up, I do want to, to speak to the idea that this is a real fantastical film. And because of that, that means that at certain points in time, some people, including one person on this stage, do um, become a smaller character. <laughs> what, what was it like, um, you know, really filling out that, that kind of, uh, and Reginald, ex- apologies for, because I, I still don't know exactly how to describe the technology. But how did that work for all of you? And Eddie, what was it like for you to participate in uh, that? Small. Yeah, I guess becoming small. That's a good way of good way of explaining it. Yeah, when you see uh, the special effects shots and stuff like that, those things are really time consuming, and uh, and it's uh, awkward, and you and it's. Uh, <laughs> It's just a, a a lot of work doing a, a sequence like that. So it's not like you feel like what it's like to get small. It's just it's really like putting a jigsaw puzzle together when you're doing those sequences. So it was just long and 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 frustrating. <laughs> it was you're, you're acting yeah. with an imaginary thing, and sort of it requires a different kind of yeah. acting. Like remember, we were out, we were sh- outside shooting. You were like, okay, I want you to look in here, and, and you're shrinking and doing. That. I was like, hey, I can't do no shit like that. I was like, what? So, right. you- and then you could do it <laughs> exactly. But right, I was, and this is the thing. It's, uh, the thing is, <clears throat> I've always said that Eddie deserved an Oscar for his performance in Nutty Professor. Where for sure, right? Because it's like th- there's no acting suit that says this is how to act against a, a tennis ball, right? But he did that. He played two different women that were completely different women, right? But because people go, oh, it's just laughs. It's not funny. That's not hard. Like it's incredibly hard. And he was a pioneer in that style of performance, which he doesn't get credit for. But no, he gets credit for it. But he, he doesn't get. Enough. He hasn't gotten the accolades right. that I, I think. I and I, they, people like it. People love it. <laughs> I do think, though, that people underestimate what comedy takes. Um, yes. Both the timing, the editing, the just the entire process of what that is. Particularly when you're trying to shoot it in a film, and when you're doing it with special effects, it is not easy. 
Right. Uh, it was really strange, actually. Right. And I really have to give credit to the people at ILM because... Is that the company that did the... The, the special effects. Yeah. So it was like the Star Wars Jurassic Park people. They know a thing or two about a thing or two. There's a few. And the thing is, their comedy instincts were impeccable mm -hmm. because, you know, we took the voice work of Eddie and all the village people, of you know, Robin Thede and Nick Offerman and Chris Red. Red. And they had face reference but not body reference. And they came up with all this fantastic physical comedy on top of the great verbal comedy. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. It was a great collaboration working with them on that. Yeah, um, but in answer to your question, for me doing that, it's uh, that's where I feel like I don't have any control. I don't know what's going on. I have mm -hmm. to trust in everybody else to make sure it's right when I'm doing a scene like that because it's so technical and all of this. Uh, like I said, it's like shooting little pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, because acting is about responding yeah, and no. bouncing and doing this thing. And then you're sort of, you're hearing something over here and looking at a light cue that's over here. Mm -hmm. It's confusing. Right. But the very fact that, I mean, I didn't intend for us to have to invent something, invent some technology, but we did. You know, we had this reindeer system so that the actors, the villagers and the live action actors could act in the same scene at the same time and improvise, which made And this, remember how I was whenever we were shooting You were stuff, irritated. Really, yeah, it was, we had, no you had, Eddie loved you it. Had, you had an <laughs> earpiece in, and you had everybody's voice coming in, the earpiece, and you had the, they were back in, the, in another part of, the, part of the stage, and you had to imagine you're looking at these little people, and they're talking and improvising, and it was like... It's a madhouse. A madhouse. But it came, <laughs> it came, it came together incredibly yeah. well. Sensory over, yeah, sensory overload. Yeah, it was, so it was a lot, but you know, I wasn't acting. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, do it again. <laughs> I'm funnier. <laughs> but the only reason why you can accomplish something like that to the level that was done here is because everyone is one, so talented, but also has that chemistry and, and are collaborators, true collaborators. And well, I am the, only, the only way we could do, the only way we were able to do something like that is we had a good director steering the way through it. That's how we do it. Thank you, sir. Directors make movies. They make the movies. And actors are in the movies. <laughs> but oh, but directors like make that. the movies. Did you see what I did? This was such an Eddie Murphy move. I was like... <laughs> well, I thank you all for telling us a little bit about what it took to make this beautiful movie and to make to make a Christmas classic. I think I think based on the criteria that we established here on this stage, uh, I think we can go with it. This is one now. That's for you guys. You you got to make that call. Anybody? Anybody? I, I see some nods. I see some nods in the audience. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Eddie and J Tracy and Madison and Jenea and Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Uh, <laughs> oh, we know him as something different. Oh. <laughs> TJ. TJ, of course. <laughs> Well, I, we appreciate you all, and we appreciate you all at home watching as well. Stay tuned with us as we do part two of this conversation, and I'll learn a little bit more about how we made Candy Cane Lane. Thank you.